So uh, come to Texas and I'll teach you, teach you how to speak Texanese. Kind of like Marshallese and all of the good stuff like that. But what a joy to be here and uh, uh, once again be here. I was here uh, several years ago and uh, you had just recently gotten uh, this particular location at that time. Can y'all understand me with my Texas accent? Are y'all okay? Because y'all all talk so funny. I just want y'all to know that you do. But No, there you go. See, that's what I'm talking about. And um, uh, this had just happened. This place is a walking miracle. Yes, it is. Uh, I, I, listen, and the Holy Ghost was talking to me a moment ago. I was sitting on the front row. And the Lord said, if men and women here understand what happened, when God does something for a church like he's done for this place, he didn't do it for a building. He did it for the people. That's right. That's right. The anointing that turned this thing around that quick uh, literally is for every person individually, not when you just walk in here, but when you walk out. That should follow you to your house, on your job, uh, in the school where you're teaching, everywhere you go. Favor, increase, blessing, that should be on your life. Or, or, is everybody getting a hold of this? Can, is it okay if I take this off for a second? Because I'm gonna eat it. See, I hadn't eaten it up. But I am gonna keep it. Uh, that's not one of the edible ones there, but um, praise the Lord. So uh, uh, what, what's taking place, and uh, Dr. Morocco is a, a very dear friend, and I think this is my 19th year now to come uh, to uh, Hawaii, and uh, there's some other churches on the island that I've preached in many, uh, for many times, and then I began to go over to Maui, and Dr. Morocco being a friend, of course, I started speaking there, and he always comes and speaks in our church. Uh, and as a matter of fact, he was just with us uh, earlier last month in July, and I wish you guys had just let them stay over here. Actually, I asked Pastor Josh and Pastor Shannon to come and uh, just do some things there at the church uh, in Lamarck. If you know where Houston is, then you know where Galveston is, then you didn't get to Galveston unless you went through Lamarck. And so it's just a little spot in the road on the way. It's a little small town, uh, about 10,000 people. And I'll speak maybe just for a few minutes about some of the things that God is doing there. We built a church there that seats 4,000. Wow. Uh, God has blessed it. Uh, what we have is paid for. We have 100 acres today. Uh, we have three TV channels. We have two FM radio stations and all of the other stuff, you know, that goes with that. So I'm just saying that uh, it doesn't make any difference where you are in a little town of 10,000 people uh, outside of Houston, Texas. And uh, it's mostly a, a strong minority uh, area there, probably 80, 85, 90% minority, but that's where God moved me. And since I'm redheaded and blue eyed, I'm the least minority in the whole place. And it's my story and I'm sticking with it. Y'all better start laughing or I'm gonna, I'm gonna come back here and hit you with the word, you know? So anyway, uh, uh, it is a joy to be here. Please, uh, if you get a chance, let me just say this. I didn't bring you product or anything, but follow us on uh, Facebook, follow Walter Hallam on Facebook or Abundant Life Christian Center. Do that and then of course go to Twitter and all that and you'll see at Walter Hallam. And if you see the redheaded guy, it's either me or Casey Treat, one of the two. <laughs> so it's me. <clears throat> all right, open your Bible if you would just for a few minutes. Let me talk to you about uh, what I believe will go right in line with your impact uh, series that you're in. And Pastor, I hope this works for you this evening. And for the church, I think you'll enjoy it. Uh, I, I'd like to talk to you about five things that if you'll do this, you'll get rich. Wow. Come on. I notice I'm not talking to the right crowd tonight for that. And uh, I, would have been a, I would have been a millionaire before I was 25 if someone had taught this to me, but I had to wait till I was about 25 for that to happen. And then God began to bless us and bless us, and then we sold a bunch of stuff, and then we uh, went into the ministry full time. My father and mother pastored 50 years. And uh, a great little Holy Ghost church up in East Texas. I grew up in the house of God. I have six brothers and sisters, all redheaded and blue-eyed. <laughs> Thank you very much. Mother and daddy are redheaded and blue-eyed. And they're in heaven today. All four of my grandparents, redheaded and blue-eyed. Just thought I'd let you know it's not a curse, it's a blessing. So when you get to heaven, everybody gets red hair and blue eyes. That's my, that's my stick. I'm sticking with that one right there. But uh, we grew up in, in the house of God and uh, with people that, that sincerely love God as deeply as you and I do. They love God just as much as us, but they didn't quite have a, a revelation of some things that maybe God has given us a little extra light the further we go along in this journey. And one of them is that God wants to bless you. And anytime God says, be blessed, he then gives an instruction. 
In the Bible, when God says, uh, God bless them, then he says something to you. And so if you understand that in this short teaching I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna crank these five things out real quick, hopefully, and if not, then just go to Texas and get the rest of it, okay? <laughs> or go to the Abundant Life, uh, Abundant Life uh, Christian Center, ALCC.org, you can go there and, and a lot of stuff's archived and you can get a hold of this if it speaks to you today, especially if you're in, in business uh, or if you work or if you have a job or if you're wanting to start one or if you breathe. Uh, it, it would be real important to get a hold of this particular message. Hallelujah. Y'all yes. doing okay? Yep. Let me get over here to Genesis chapter, let me start in Genesis chapter one. Let me start in Genesis chapter one. I'm going to, let me put a pair of glasses on so I can read this a little better. Just need a little bit more light right over my head right there. If you give me just a hair of more light, that will do it. Let's go to Genesis two because of time. I'm going to skip forward. Genesis chapter two. This is the story in the Bible, of course, of Adam and Eve. You know the, uh, you know the story. I trust you've read Genesis 1, chapter 1, and chapter 2. Now, it's very important to get a hold of this because if a church like this is going to have the impact that God has called you to have, and if you in your life are going to have the impact individually that God has called you to have, there are some things in the Scripture that are extremely necessary that we activate in our life. And it's not up to God. It's up to us. Wow. Too many times we're praying for God to bless us with something, but if we're not obeying the Lord and active toward what God is telling us to do or what we are desiring, uh, you, you'll just find out in your short journey, I've been pastoring 32 years now, and I can just tell you that uh, if you do not pursue something, uh, you will rarely ever see God answer that prayer if it's something you are desiring, but you just do nothing about it. You've got to keep that alive on the inside of you. Listen to me. When God birthed you, he put something on the inside of you called purpose. Very important to get this. Uh, people have asked me many times as a pastor, what is it that God wants me to do? And I simply ask them, what is it you like to do? Right. Because about probably 90% of the time, what you really want to do and what you uh, wish you were doing is probably in line with what you were called to do. Right. And we get all distracted in life and, and sometimes God will give you an exact instruction that may be uh, opposite of that, but uh, so many things kind of convolute our lives and they get dis we get distracted and, and, and we miss the thing that we really want to do. I've, t I've talked to so many uh, men, especially in my life, and I've done many, many seminars on these particular things. And one thing I found out uh, you are free to work at the job that you would like to work at. And I've had so many guys say to me, you know, I can't wait till I retire because I just hate this job I'm doing, but it, but it puts food on the table. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking that's a pretty difficult thing to get locked into something that you have to do all of your life. That's called prison. Yeah. But you know, there is something that you could do that you really like to do or that you uh, see in front of you that keeps you motivated every day when you wake up. Hallelujah. Yeah. Let, let's learn how to fulfill the call of God and find that particular thing that God has for us in our life. All right, Genesis chapter two. Let me read it to you real quickly uh, and I'll give you a couple of things the Bible says. Uh, beginning in verse five, let me skip down. And every plant of the field, before, before every plant of the field, listen, before it was in the earth, And every herb of the field before it ever had grown, before it ever grew. For the Lord God had not, listen, he had not caused it to rain upon the earth. And here's the, here's the thing, listen. And there was not a man to till the ground. And there went up a mist from the earth and it watered the whole face of the earth. Here's what happens. If you read chapter one, you read chapter two. God begins to do some real powerful things called creation. But when he created it, it was laying there in a dormant state. Chapter one, he tells about what he did. And then chapter two, he begins to talk about, he begins to reiterate the process of what he did. So instead of reading verse one, verse two, verse three, think of step one, step two, step three. So he begins to outline it back to you. It says, so God created everything and he put it in the earth. 
but it hadn't come up out of the earth yet because there wasn't any water. And then right here it says, God caused a mist to begin to come up out of the ground. And as it began to water the ground, then everything began to grow. And it begins to tell it in its process. And God says, he wasn't going to do that. He was gonna lay it there. Here's all this potential, here's all this seed. Here's all of those things and they're just there, the Bible says. Because he did not have a man to till the ground. The word right there, the word for tend or for till is the same word we get for the word to manage. And I'm not going to repeat myself a lot. I'm just going to, I'll just let you go and, and, and check these things out because I promise you I got degrees this far and I can do the Hebrew and the Greek for you and bore you all night long. You're not going to like it, but I can just tell you it's there. And what God said, I'm not going to waste all of my creation until I get a manager. Until, and so then he calls it to begin to mist. He got some mud right there and dust and he began to form him a man. The next verse says, and stood him up, breathed into him his spiritual, uh, his spiritual seed. He breathed it into him and man became a thinking intellect. And God said, now here's what I want you to do. And it's these five things right here. And they all deal with managing the fruit that comes from the seed. If you miss this one, you will miss all of the, the direction that God talks about when he gives us the points about creation. We can get all out there and get real uh, 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 eschatologically uh, kind of bent and we can become all scientific about it and all of that, but at the end of the day, it all has to do with what happened to everything that had a seed in it. Because beginning at day three, God begins to put seed in everything. And that seed laid there until it had got water and that wasn't gonna happen until God created a manager because God is not slothful. Do y'all still want me to do this? I mean, he wants you to put your hand to the plow and if the plow breaks, buy a tractor. Hallelujah. Whatever you do, don't make an excuse because you ever want to get the father a little bit upset, just go read what Jesus said about people who make excuses who are not pursuing what God has for them to do in their life. Jesus gets real upset about it. And so we have to be people who are active, who are about the uh, father's business. Now watch this. And so he said, I'm looking for a manager. I'm just not gonna waste all this energy and all this power and everything that I have. Look back at chapter one now, let me show you. Um, the way uh, God said it in verse 28. And God blessed them. Someone shout blessed. Bless. This is his instruction to Adam and Eve. Here they come. And God blessed them. He blessed them. He blessed them. And then he said to them. And you'll notice that all through the scriptures. When God blesses someone, he instructs them. So we're like, will you be blessed? You be blessed. You be blessed. And that's good. But when God said be blessed, he literally was saying, release what's on the inside of you that I put there. Use what's in you that I have put in you. God breathed into them. And then when it was time to activate them, remember there's two different parallels that are telling about it. When it was time to activate them, he said, I want you to release what I created on the inside of you and begin to use it. And it's in seed form in you. Now, if we had chapter one and we start reading about every fruit and all the grass and all the uh, things that God had and he created it all and the seed was on the inside of it, something had to activate the seed called water and then it began to happen and then it had to be managed. If you and I are gonna succeed in life, God has birthed inside of you the day you were not only born, but especially the day you were born again and filled with his, and he blew his spirit inside of you and you became a new creation. All the potential that was in the one who did it is now inside of you. And he's given you a purpose. You're not to do everything in life like our uh, father did and like Jesus did, but there's something about that of God that went in you that is extremely necessary it is pointed, it has a purpose, God did it, and that's what you have to release out of you if you want to walk in the blessing. Wow, that's good. 
It's one thing for me to take a handful of money and throw it on the offering uh, because God has been good to us and because uh, money follows effort. And because we have with our heart put the effort into obeying God to put our hand to the plow, uh, to work, to manage, to do whatever we do, and money just follows effort. Listen, money's not divine. Money's a reward. Money's a reward of effort. Does anybody want to be blessed? Yes. Anyone in here believe in God for more money? Come on. Yep. Wave your hand if you are. The rest of us, we're going to pray for you for mental illness in just a moment. Sure, because you need, you need a little bit more every single day. I don't care who you are. You need it every single day. I was born into a very poor family. I promise you, my mother had a sixth grade education. My daddy had a ninth grade education. He was a World War II Marine and a veteran. And I thank the Lord for all of those things. But he got turned on to Jesus Christ when he was in his 20s. And he decided, uh, I don't have to stay down. I can at least do better. And he began to do everything he knew to do. By the time he and my mom went to heaven, they were very well off. So your origination doesn't necessarily determine where your destination is going to be. If you begin to adopt some uh, qualities that are inside of you and God's no respecter of person, he's the same for every person. If we start saying stuff like, well, you know, everything on the island here has already been bought and everything's already hooked up and it belongs to, you know, the foreigners and all and whatever, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Listen, uh, this year there will be a thousand new millionaires right here on Oahu. Yeah. Sure there will. And next year there'll be a thousand new millionaires again. And the next year another thousand will happen. And they will just begin to come up and, and they'll, somebody will get an idea. They've got something on the inside of them and they're gonna activate these five principles that I'm about to roll off to you right now. And when they activate these principles and pursue them, I can tell you wow. that they will go right straight over what you've been driving past every single day. Wow. Do it. Hallelujah. I like land. How many of you like land? I like land that nobody else says is good. Years ago, the Spirit of the Lord said to me, he said, if you're willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. And then the Holy Ghost said this to me. Listen, he said, all land has good in it and it has evil in it. And if you're willing and obedient to that unction and to the plan that God has there, you will eat the good of the land. There's no such thing as not being able to succeed because you're in the likeness and the image of God. God never birthed anyone rich and he never birthed anyone poor. He created man in his likeness and his image, man and woman, in his likeness and image and what you do with what you've got to start with and where you go. Some people have a little leg up, but it doesn't make any difference. You don't have to. I tell you in Jesus' name, you follow the unction of the Holy Ghost and these five quick things that I'm fixing to lay out for you and you will go where God wants you to go and you won't go to hell in the process. Yeah. I mean, we can be holy and, and po and busted and disgusted and all that stuff, or we can be holy and blessed and releasing these, these abilities and talents and, and anointings and callings that God has placed on the inside of us. For me and my house, and I know for you and your house, because I know Dr. Morocco and I know Dr. Josh, so you just better get ready because somebody in here is about to go whoosh. I mean, it's just about to happen, that anointing Right from the very beginning, I mean, who in the world buys a shopping center in Hawaii, <laughs> in Honolulu, Come on, that's it. with like Jack in the Box or something on the corner? Crazy. And the next thing you know, like the Beverly Hillbillies, the next thing you know, Jed's a millionaire. <laughs> I mean, somebody pays the thing off some way. You know, I know the story and all, and so it's wonderful. Look, that anointing is on you. Now, you may not need something that big to fulfill that seed that's on the inside of you. The, the, that God breathed into you when you were born. But he breathed himself into Adam. And when you and I were born and born of his spirit, he breathed purpose into you too. It's deep on the inside of you. It needs some water to cause it to break open and it needs a manager from that point on. And if that's God's plan for the number one man, I believe he's the prototype. Maybe I should call this uh, how to train your garden. Come on. How about this? How to train your first million. Would that be okay? 
Now, I can show you some techniques and stuff if you want to, but if you learn the techniques of, of money, you can prosper, but without the character that's only, that comes from God, you can go to hell with it too. But if you'll develop your inner man the same way you're developing the outer man, hallelujah, yeah. because your gift will take you to places and will pr pr produce through you things that your character cannot manage unless you allow God to continue to change you into his image a little more every day from glory to glory. How many of you are glad that you, can, you and I can just keep changing, huh? Come on. We can keep, we're not perfect. Church, we're not perfect, but we can still keep changing. We can just keep changing. We can just keep changing. I said we can just keep changing. Sure, we can just keep changing. Hallelujah. All right, here we go. Y'all sure you're okay? Here it is, all right. <clears throat> Watch how quick this is. Uh, the Bible says God bless them. He said, release now on the inside of you this power and this anointing that I, and this purpose that I called you for. Release it. Blessed. Released. Uh, and God blessed them. And he said unto them, be fruitful. Number one, write it down. Be fruitful. Number two, multiply. Number three, you okay? Yeah. Replenish the earth, including Hawaii, subdue it, whoo, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, thank you, Lord, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth. One translation says that creeps upon the earth. Five things. Here they come. Because we read over this and we forget that this was God not wasting oxygen when he was talking to his first man. He was telling that man, I've created a universe. I've created everything you see and will ever see around you. And then I put in all of that a seed that will continue to reproduce. And I need someone to manage it. And you're going to have to do five things, Adam. You and Eve are going to have to get together. If I had time, I'd show you from the scripture on that because that's speaking of male and female. I mean, we ought to have some, some female millionaires in this Come church. Come on. Amen. Oh, yeah. I mean, thank God for men that get out there and get with it. But look, guys, uh, women ought to, you might as well get rich. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. I almost said what I probably shouldn't have said right there. That way, if that guy doesn't treat you right, hallelujah. He won't want to leave you. All right, here we go. Five things. Say it again. Say fruitful, fruitful. Multiply, multiply, replenish. Subdue and have dominion. Come on, let's say it one more time. Fruitful, Fruitful. Multiply, multiply, replenish, replenish. Subdue, subdue, and have dominion. Let's talk about it just for a moment right here, okay? Be fruitful, number one. It just literally means to be productive. We think of being fruitful when we're talking about Adam and Eve, and the first thing we think of, they're going to have a lot of kids. Well, there may be a slight um, connotation to that in Genesis chapter one or chapter two, because fruitful obviously was what they were supposed to do. They were supposed to multiply, but God didn't uh, just birth them and say that you are to be uh, seedful. Too many times I think that's kind of the mindset that gets like Adam and Eve, y'all just, y'all supposed to turn into bunnies and have just as many kids as you can possibly have and just sit back naked under the tree and all of that and, and every time you have an urge or something. That's not what he was saying. He was saying, look, you see everything that I've done right here? You see everything that I created? That's why I put you here to manage it. Remember, we saw that. He said, you're to manage it. And when you manage it, here's what I want you to do. I want you to make everything that you put your hand to productive. Be fruitful. Be fruitful. Well, look, if God could just make it grow and it produce and do all of that by itself, he didn't need Adam and Eve. He didn't need to give them a job. Why do they need a job if it was just going to all happen by itself? If you refuse to do that, if, if we, we continue to read chapter 2, you'd see Adam and Eve, and then God created Eve, of course, and, and gave uh, uh, her to Adam in that sense of the word. But Adam looked at her, and, and he said, she's not a monkey, and she's not an elephant, and she's, you know, all of that. Whoa! 
And he probably takes off after her and God says, whoa, man. That's probably why she's called a woman today. Whoa, man. It'll sink in. He said, be productive. Number one, you have to be productive. And you have to uh, be productive with the potential, which is called the seed. I wish I could... I need about three weeks to do this, but anyway, that seed is inside of the fruit, and without a doubt, God puts seed, we all understand that, he puts seed inside of us, but everything that man was told to manage had seed in it. And he said, take care of that, manage it, so it reproduces. Now look, can I, can I say this and just bounce off of it and go forward? Now look, don't ever get the mindset that you want God just to bless you, and, and you know, me and us four and maybe one more and I'll just do my little part in the corner of glory land. Would you get that out of your mind and heart? And if anyone ever somehow subliminally put that in you, they were your enemy against that what's on the inside of you, which is a drive and a desire. That's why we work overtime when we get it. That's why we get upset if we get cut on our paycheck. Hallelujah. Yeah. I mean, we want what we, have, uh, what we see and what we're working for. You and I were geared by God to, with what he's placed on the inside of you, to become very, very fruitful, very productive. Uh, when, when I was just a boy, uh, I, I played a lot of sports. I don't want to go into all of that stuff. And, uh, but anyway, when I was a boy, just as a kid, when I would get out of football or baseball practice or something, I would go and I'd mow yards. I'd mow yards. And everything that I got, if I ever got a, a $5, back in those days, $5 was a big yard. And that's a push yard. You didn't have a ride mower in those days. And sometimes you didn't even have a, a lawn mower. You had a push mower, you know. And it just some of y'all know what I mean. And others of y'all have been watching, you know, antique road show and saw one of them or something like that. But still, uh, I always believed in being productive. And thank God I had a mother and father who, who, who believed that and they, they trained their seven kids, not in a mean way, but just to feel the joy of success and of doing something because they knew that ultimately that would take off on the inside if they could steer it the right direction. So we'd just work and when that was over with, my dad, who was a pastor, uh, he also had a washeteria and a laundry. So we'd go down there and work in the washeteria and laundry till about nine or 10 o'clock at night. And then we'd go home and then I'd be up in the morning at five or six in the morning and be at football practice and do the two a days and do everything else that took place. And we just, but, but we felt like we were supposed to be productive and in church on Wednesday night and on church Sunday morning and Sunday night. And back in those days, we went to church a lot of times on Saturday night too, because they told us that was the devil's night. So we were gonna go to church. And so um, um, I found out that if you will put your hand to something, before long, you will begin to narrow down all of the choices out here in life and the options, and you will suddenly kind of zone in on that thing that you really like. I like two things. Now, I've been in business a long time, but uh, I like two things. I like the gospel, the word. Uh, I, I spend many, many, many hours in the word of God every week, and every man of God should. And secondly, I like land. I love land. Wow, how many of y'all like land? Do you like land? I love land, I love houses. I'll tell you one little quick story, just on being productive. Uh, uh, when, when we moved into that area, and uh, Cindy and I, my wife and I, so we move into this area, and we start knocking on doors, and, and we're way away from where we were raised up, right on the coast in, in Galveston County, right there in Lamarck, right before you get on the island of Galveston. And so there's nothing out there in that direction at all. You know, you've already gone past Johnson Space Center and you've already gone past all those other things on 45 and you're almost on the island of Galveston, which has about 45,000 people on it. Where I'm on this side of it in Lamarck, Texas with 10,000 people. And uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's an area that no one wanted to live in and I don't know why God called me to that area, but he did. And so we start knocking on doors and I finally got 10 people to show up at our house. It took about two and a half months to come to our house. So Cindy and me and 10, we call that 12. We said, that's our quorum. This is the day we start. The, that was our official start of the church. And so I preached probably the worst message I ever preached in my life, except maybe tonight. And so um, here we were, and I said, look guys, I don't know exactly where we're going, but we're gonna obey God. And we're gonna try to affect every person in this region. That's good. 
Now, I don't know how we're going to do it, and we're not saying we're the only ones, but that has, that's totally irrelevant. We're going to try to reach every single household in this region on the Gulf Coast. We're going to do that by the grace of God. And they all kind of clapped a little bit like, yeah, he, you know, he's, uh, you know he, he's lost his mind. Well, I didn't know how we were going to do that. We didn't have a building. We didn't have anything. Today, uh, our organization right there, just on that place we are, uh, is worth many, many millions of dollars. It's paid for. Now listen, it's paid for. The city and other places, the colleges come down and rent our facility to do their, their commencement exercises and things like that. And it, look, in Lamarck, Texas. No, you hadn't heard of it either, see? Lamarck, Texas. Why would they do that? Well, because we were blessed and we started releasing and we're still trying to figure all of that out releasing what god has placed on the inside because it came from him so if you're going to be blessed it's not just a semantic word that we say to one another it is a supernatural releasing of what's on the inside of you that some people don't even know they have it inside of them but you got to get a hold of it and get it loosed out of you uh, and, and you be sure from the day you were born, your adversary, the devil, has tried to shut down on the ins in your mind, in your soul, in that living soul, he's tried to kill that light inside of you that would release that, that powerful seed that God breathed into you. But if you'll release it, I mean, where's your desire? All this week, I was supposed to be on vacation this week and I'm, I'm honored to preach in, in Maui with Doctor and just so thrilled that Pastor Josh and, and Shanna fed us supper the other night and it was just so good. I'm telling you, he, did y'all know he was a gourmet chef? Good night. I left there and went back to the room and got on those scales and that scale said, one at a time, please. You know? I said, man, you don't know what I just ate. Good night. It was awesome. I ate half of a Hawaii over there. You know, I did. I mean, I ate. I'm going to go back home and tell the church I ate my way through Hawaii. Someone shout fruitful. fruitful. Come on. You've got to produce something. That's not just kids. Uh, you've got something on the inside of you that's powerful. Genesis 1, verse 11 and 12, and you read it later. It says the seed is on the inside of everything that God created with life. And what seed does is reproduce Itself, Come on, just stick, stick with me here just for a moment. You've got a, what, what's that dream that, what's that seed, that thought, that vision, that desire that's on the inside of you? Well, there's a purpose for that. It wasn't just so you could have a fantasy and, and think about, you know, the, uh, you know, the lifestyle of the rich and famous and all that foolishness. No, God put something on the inside of you that I tell you would sustain you. They could drop you out of a helicopter anywhere on this planet. And when you hit the ground in the name of Jesus, you can release what's on the inside of you. And before it's over with, instead of being the tail, you'd be raised right back up to the head. I don't care where you are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's the anointing that's on this church. I'm telling you, that this whole ministry here of the King's Cathedral ministry from Maui to here to, to Marshall Islands to everywhere else, everywhere these people put their foot, they begin to impact it for Jesus Christ. That's because they learn to release with the anointing of the Holy Ghost and with your own living soul. Your soul is your mind, your emotion, that, that energy that you've got that God placed between your ears and it's so powerful when you put your hand to something and you expect, if I'm going to put my hand to this, I'm not trying, I expect this to work. Come on. I may not know exactly where it's going, but it's gonna, it's gonna be working while it's going. Hallelujah. Otherwise, we don't, we don't waste our time with this stuff. I mean, when I got married 41 years ago, thank you very much, when I got married 41 years ago, I was captain of the football team and she was a head twirler and all of that. We've been, we've been sweethearts since we were kids and we still are today. She's up there right now and she's up shopping right now. She was gonna come here. She said, uh, I can go shopping or go there. You're shopping. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't even know what to say about that. But you know, when my father, who was a pastor, he married us, you know, when he looked down and he said, and he said, now, Walter, do you take Cindy to be your lawful wedded, wedded wife and all of those things? And, and, and you know, I didn't, I didn't just say, well, I'll try. Right. 
No. I said, I do. I'm going to make this work. I don't know how it's going to work because I don't have any experience of being married other than I've got a nice model in front of me, you know, mom and dad uh, you know, that, that were modeling, you know, the best they knew, a marriage family and all those kind of things. And when, when, when he said that to her, uh, I took my ring and I put it on her finger. And she took that ring and put it in my nose and off we went. <laughs> and it's been working for 41 years. But it's not because we try. You don't try to be married. We don't try to stay together. You don't try to stay together. If you have an option, you won't. Right. No, you, you do that. You're releasing something on the inside of you that says, wait a minute, greater is he that's in me than this issue I'm going through here in the world. There's a way I know I have the, this dream of a good family and a good, that's not the devil giving you that dream. No, that's God. That's inside of you and you have to, you have to evolve yourself. You gotta uh, get your own skill level up sometime. You gotta reach out, you gotta make some adjustments. But you're managing that, that God put inside of you. That, that now you're alive thinking about it. Uh, it works in every facet of life. It takes a seed. It takes a seed, ideas. Inventions, they're on the inside. You have to reproduce yourself. I own several patents and, and God has blessed it. I thank the Lord for it. It was just an idea, just an idea. Just things like this right here, just an idea. Just an idea. Uh, and, and so we have a couple of these models. And so these are, let me stick that back up. These are, this is just something as simple as a piece of plastic. That's a collar stay, thank you. That's just a little collar stay. And then I have one that has an adhesion on the back of it. So like if you have a polo shirt on and, and you know, you, you can get that $100 shirt, you know how that goes. And then, then the collar, they always put two-bit collars on our shirts. I can't figure that out. And there's not much in life that, that just bothers me more than anything for my collar to not be straight. I'm sorry, it just bothers me. Pray for me, I'll get over it. Every time bright objects go by, I kind of get distracted with it a little bit, you know, and it kind of... It's a hold of them, so I have these little issues. But anyway, I started thinking about that, and they didn't have collar stays for those things. So I got some double back tape, and I got just out of a white shirt a collar stay, and I just put tape on one side of it, and I just stuck it on, on my little golf shirt. And I thought, well, there you go, now I got a straight collar. Well, I didn't know no one had ever done that before. So then I got a little patent pending thing on it. And then we started mass marketing it. And then it was sold around the world. And at one time, I have to go check it right now, we were the number one collar stay on uh, Amazon. What? Are y'all listening to me? Yeah. Look, all you need is one ideal and you can live like a king. Come on. But you've got to release that gift that's on the inside of you. So then we, then we decided, we were traveling all the time, so then we bought the first jet. And so we got the first jet, and so we were traveling, and, and, and it was tough for my golf clubs to get in that storage area. Well, they, you know, they weren't gonna redo those jets. Y'all mad at me now, aren't you, see? You, you didn't know you were gonna get all this. And, 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 and then I thought, well, my golf clubs won't fit in there. Real well, it takes up to, so I designed, uh, my son-in-law and me, we did this together, we designed our own little bag. We called it the three-in-one bag. So it's a golf bag, it's a travel bag, it's a rain bag, it's a play bag. It's got all of this stuff, so we call it a three-in-one bag. And then we got a patent on something on it. And that's all you need. Well, that's half of what you need. You have an idea, something so simple. You have it on the inside of you, but you have to be fruitful with it. You have to work with it. Some of you in here, have, you've just got multiple ideas of things that would meet a need some way or just a new way of doing something. It's on the inside of you. And that didn't come from the devil. That's, right. That's part of that God package. But you have to be fruitful with it. Hallelujah. Yes. Now, I don't want anybody to get mad at me and hate on me. I'm from Texas. Are y'all okay? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Can I tell you this and you're gonna be all right? Yes. Okay, my family owns Glow Ammo. And so we own it lock, stock, and barrel. And we have several places that make all of our bullets for us and stuff. And so Glow Ammo uh, also is licensed out now. 
And so blow ammo is, you can shoot around, and when you do, it creates a laser, not, not a, uh, it just literally creates a laser streak. It's not phosphorus. It's one of the most unique things, and right now, it's just taking the market over, and, and we license it out to other people. My brother is right now. Licensed out to other people, uh, other manufacturers, because now the police can see where their bullet goes. And now the military can see exactly where that, where that shell goes. I'm, I'm a veteran, I'm an Air Force veteran, and all those kind of things from the 70s, and God's been good to us, and, and, and let me just say this, but it's a blessing. But my, my brother had, and I, I just have a little piece of it. They're the primary owners of that. And he just had an idea. But what he did when he was a boy in daddy's church, my brother would double tithe. If we mowed a yard and he got $5, he wouldn't put 50 cents in. He would put in a dollar from the time he was that little. And today, once again, old Jed's a millionaire. You know what I mean? But, uh, but it was just an idea. And that idea uh, is, is going to solve tons of problems. And it's already the police associations are wanting it. Uh, NATO's asking about it now because of some unique stuff. It's a blessing. God can give you an idea. Come on. God can give you one idea. And an idea then has to be cultivated. It has to be made fruitful. But stick there with it. And I've got like five minutes to get you the rest of this. Are you all okay tonight? Are you sure? Uh, okay, the second thing, let's just do this right now. Uh, the second thing... It's called multiply. Everyone shout multiply. multiply. And the word multiply means to reproduce right. or to manufacture, mm. to make it, make it. Don't just have the idea, but now you have to figure out how you're going to manufacture it. How are you going to get it out there? How are you going to reproduce it? And so that process today, it's so nice because you have the internet today. I, uh, I've had, you know, people, they'll pay you lots of money to come and say some of the stuff I'm saying right now. But I'm just saying, I'm not asking for money. I don't even want the money. Here's what I'm saying. You can reproduce and begin to produce what God has placed on the inside of you. And that dream could be on the inside of you for a long time. But I tell you, there comes a moment if you are becoming fruitful with that, you, you understand you've got to manufacture it. You have to make it some way. You can read the internet and you can figure out how to do this or you can get you a lawyer, you can get you a consultant if it's something, or, or find somebody that can uh, help you do that. But those dreams that are on the inside of you, Steve Jobs, you know, uh, he just had a dream. It was on the inside of him and when he finally figured that out, now he had to manufacture. And so he starts the whole Apple thing, you know. And all of that begins to take place powerfully because he's following those principles. Now, he might not have been a Christian. I, I, I'm not judging him in any way, but the process is absolutely the same. Colonel Sanders, how many of you know that people ate fried chicken long before there was a Colonel Sanders? Can we be honest about it? I don't know what Christians would do without chicken. What would we do? Ever since that rooster crowed, it, you know, and got Peter in all of that trouble, I know preachers have been getting even with those guys ever since then. I don't know about everybody else. But Lord, have mercy. And, and this guy gets this idea, not about how to make the special recipe with all of the spices. That's called marketing. What he did was figure out how to reproduce it, how to manufacture it. And he got it going because I promise you, you go over to Pastor Josh's house where we're all going after supper tonight. No, I'm, I'm, I'm after church. Just joking, just joking. You go over there, he can fry some chicken up. But if it's not reproduced, and reproduced and reproduced and manufactured and manufactured and manufactured. Yeah, that's good. And that's exactly what God said to Adam. He said, go to work on it. Don't sit around watching as the stomach turns and the young and the worthless and all that stuff and, and just clicking off hours of the day, dreaming and thinking about, you know, I wish I had a Rolls Royce. No, no, no. Release what's on the inside of you. Come on. Be blessed. I said be blessed. Release what God put on the inside of you and begin to use it and start right where you are with it and see where God takes it. And before long, it will begin to reproduce. Woo! How many of you are glad that the, that the guy at McDonald's uh, figured out how to reproduce a hamburger? Come on. Yeah. Yeah. And he changed the world for fast food. 
Because everybody doesn't reproduce his hamburger, they reproduce his method for mass production. That's what he did. I mean, he owns all of those patents on all of those machines. Wow. Uh, some people asked him one time at the University of Texas, go horns, and somebody was, you know, I better watch out. At the University of Texas, I'm not sure this is why. You know, and um, somebody's at the University of Texas. He, he was speaking to about 1,200 business majors. And so he's talking, to, and, and they asked him a question. They said, what, uh, 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 how many of you know, he said, what I do? And people started answering, you know, you make hamburgers, you're in the food business, you're into this business, you're into that business. And he, he just let them answer for a while. He said, no, no, that's not what I do. He said, I'm in land management. What I do is find the best piece of property, location, location, location. I find the best piece of property I can. I buy it for the best price that I can get it for. And then I take the square foot of that property and I raise it up as high as I can get it through buildings, through service, through food, through everything I can get the value of because at the end of the day, it's how do I get that piece of property up to the highest potential it can ever have? Oh, wow. Are y'all listening? Yeah. I would call that being fruitful. Yeah. And so it's a matter of perspective. I bought some land sometime back. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not bragging, I'm just talking. It's what you get for inviting me to come and speak. And so I bought this and we, were pay, we paid $10,000 an acre because it's just scrub land. You can't do anything with it. Now, I just signed a contract for one quarter, a, a quarter of that acre that we'll do, four, we'll do it four times. I just signed one quarter of an acre while I was here in Hawaii. I love Hawaii, man. I make a ton of money coming to Hawaii. I make money. Money comes to me. And I can just tell you, uh, we signed just for that one thing so they could put a sign on it a hundred and thirty-five thousand dollars just for that little spot to wow. put a sign up on it and still have three quarters of the acre left wow. <laughs> it's a matter of perspective it's a matter of prayer there's experience involved i understand and there's some other things involved but everybody has to start somewhere with a, with an idea with an attitude you've got to understand god put productivity on the inside of you it's called seed and he's not talking about the physical part, just the physical part that makes babies. He's talking about life and managing the garden. Come on, somebody clap their hands to the Lord if you're getting a hold of this. I hope it gets on the inside. Third thing and I'm almost done, here it is. He said, uh, be fruitful, multiply, that's a powerful thing. And replenish, that's an interesting word. If you replenish something, what you do is you, you, you distribute. You get into distribution. And when you replenish, you just, every successful business in the world learns how to distribute something. If you can't handle the distribution of it, you're going to bottle up the blessing. Mm. So you have to constantly be upgrading your own skill set, your knowledge level, or you have to hire it. Somebody to bring you in, you bring in to help you distribute what is fruitful in you, what you are now manufacturing. Now you've got to get it out there. With the, with the internet and stuff like that today, you never have to leave your house if you don't want to. Relative to whatever it is that you put your hand to. And don't get locked into just one thing only. Not just one thing only. But what is it God put in you? If we can distribute how many of you are glad that we were called to distribute the gospel to the world? God didn't give us cell phones so, so we could gossip. That you can click right here and be on the other side of the planet. Right before we got here, I was sitting in the car there. I was either in the car or right before I got in the car with uh, uh, talking to my daughter, uh, my oldest daughter, who is our executive pastor, and said, hey, how'd the service go tonight? Awesome. What were you teaching? Oh, you did the leadership class tonight. Awesome. So she started the leadership series tonight. I just showed it to you, uh, actually, because we were texting right here also, and she was telling me some stuff about it. Now, look, uh, that cell phone was for a good purpose. And you and I can distribute the gospel of Jesus around the world. Those satellites up there. How many of you know the internet's not for porn? Come on. Can I get two amens on that? Yes. I mean, that's not what that stuff is about. That's right. You know, it's not, it's not like for, for hate, you know, hate stuff and all of that. No. That's because one day, that's 
Jesus is going to come back and the whole world is going to hear about it just like that. Wow. He's going to set his foot on the Mount of Olives over there in Jerusalem. But when he does, bam, ABC, NBC, Fox wow. News, all of them are going to be right there watching. Sure. Oh, yeah. Russia, everybody's going to be watching. God did all of it because he's going to distribute. First thing he did, what did he do? He drew 12 to himself and start distributing it. Then he drew 70, take it out there and go with it. Then he got 120 on the day of Pentecost, said, take that. Then he got 3,000 the next day. Then he got 5,000. And now we're one point something billion uh, right now on planet Earth. We should be distributing the gospel. Which is exactly what God is saying do right here, even in your own life. Replenish, replenish, replenish. It's not good enough that my daddy and mama preach the gospel. No, I'm supposed to replenish. They're in heaven today. They're drinking mango stuff, you know, up in heaven. Yeah. <laughs> With ice cream. Yeah. Bluebell, woo woo. Yeah. My wife's family owns Bluebell. Just thought yeah. I'd say that. Serious? Serious? Some of her cousins. Yeah, sure do. Don't be hating on me. You've got to love me to go to heaven. I can't help it. I can't help it if I'm blessed. Oh, hallelujah. And we want to be a blessing to someone else. Sure. For the name of Jesus. Five loaves, two fishes. Take it, boys. Distribute to 5,000. Go pick it up. Bring it back. Jesus used all of these five techniques constantly in his ministry. Little did we know that the second man, Adam, was doing exactly what God told the first man, Adam, to do. Wow. Uh, and then the scripture says, number four, is this number four? Yep. He said subdue. Someone shout subdue. subdue. And the word subdue is an interesting word, but it means to control. Uh, to, to manage and control. Like, what, what is it you're trying to produce out of you? We're talking about impact. And not only can you spiritually impact uh, your, your world, your garden, but you can also financially and all of those other wonderful ways impact your garden. So you have to have a certain uh, subduing in there. Look, we don't let the devil take over our garden. Right. It sure would have been wise if Eve would have rose up that day and said, What? Like, I'm going to give up all this for you, you ugly looking serpent. That's all she'd have had to say. But no. She's got to act like I'm all dissatisfied with my current level of blessings. Because there's something I can't do instead of rejoicing with everything I can do. And so the devil created the illusion of being dissatisfied with the blessing that was released upon her and through her. Like, I'm bored. I've got to drink something. Whoa. No, if she would have just said, you know what? You see all this? I am blessed. God has put this in me to manage and to see and to do all. If I ever get finished with doing all of this, and you won't because all of it has a seed in it. If she would have just rejected the emotion of being dissatisfied with her current level of blessing. Wow. But she didn't do that. And she, she, she took the bait. And because of that, her and Adam ate us out of house and home. And now we're having to start all over again with Jesus. And Jesus releases the blessing. It's on you. And when he pours his spirit in you, he says, subdue it. Control it. I can't control the planet. I just want to have control of what God has placed in my garden. Inside of my house. You come to, you come to my house. I'll just tell you right now. You come to my house. And you come in there talking filthy and you do any of that. I'm talking about you. I'm talking about my house. I'm like, you got one or two options. You really do. You can stop that or you can hit the road. I have children, grandchildren, family, atmosphere. This is my garden. We don't talk like that. 
We don't let those words in. We don't watch it on our TV. I'm not poisoning my mind. I've never seen one horror movie in my life. Not because I'm righteous, but I've never had a nightmare. I, never, I just don't put that stuff in me. Why in the world would I take the breaking of the Ten Commandments and use that as my entertainment to watch? Pay money to go watch the breaking of the Ten Commandments. I mean, I like movies. I do. I mean, I like all that stuff. I have three TV stations. I better like it, huh? I like movies. But it's not just everything your eyes can see. No, no, no. You got to subdue your garden. Take control of that. And I know we live in a very promiscuous world and a very open world and all that stuff. So we're not trying to put people in cocoons and, and isolation. Uh, you don't have to do that. But you have control over you. Praise the Lord. And, and just ask God for wisdom in that. And because of time, I'll just have to go real quickly. And just uh, uh, The way you control, I think, is through understanding. You get an understanding, you get a, you get a desire, you grow that way. The fifth thing, the last thing he said, have dominion. And the word dominion there just means to master and maximize purpose. Wow. Uh, you'll notice God never said in the Bible to have dominion over another person. God never told you to have dominion over a person. So like we don't belong to people and people don't belong to us, except, I mean, if you're, if you're married, you belong to your wife and, and you belong to your husband. And if you don't have that figured out yet, you better figure that out. And so I know I'm preaching to a great church, so you know that. But uh, outside of that, we, we don't have dominion over other people. No, but what, what's, that, what's that garden? What's that blessing that God is releasing that we are told to master and maximize its potential? That, that'll be a lifetime effort. You'll go all your life developing and you'll, you'll be changing and you'll be evolving in, in those efforts and, and God will just be blessing and blessing. And then you'll, you'll be using that. I don't need anyone to teach me how to make money. I'm just going to tell you. You don't either. I don't need to teach you how to make money. I need someone to teach me how to manage it right. And how, because you can go from minimum wage to millionaire. If you don't believe it, talk to my daddy. Talk to me. Talk to a lot of people in our church. Listen, God is a good God, but it requires a certain effort. And this is only one element of the gospel we're talking about. This is not like the, like the whole kingdom is around these five points right here. No, we're talking about how to impact and how to be successful at what you put in your hand relative to the call of God and according to the blessing that God put on the inside of you. You just want to maximize that, and I promise you, you will be so satisfied. 